everybody, it's Coach Ross. Uh, in today's video, we're going to be talking about or continuing the series with a revisiting series. So in this one, the topic is we're going to talk about the run game and the running game that we used in our in our offense this season and how it worked and some change we made. So if that's something you're interested, stay tuned and I hope you enjoy this video. First run scheme that we used, we only carried two throughout the season. Uh, we ran an inside zone and we also um, ran our, a stretch play. Um, kind of talking about adding in the counter for the next season, also possibly even maybe doing away with our stretch play. But I'm a, I am a firm believer that you have to have, uh, or you should have, not the have to have, but you should have uh, one inside run and one outside run. However, um, what we found too is that our screen game, our outside screen game, um, worked well just almost as an extension of our running game. So we pretty much use that as almost our outside run. So we're going to be toying around with a few ideas this, this off season, but I just want to kind of cover what, I, what uh, our two run schemes that we use. We use the, again, like I said, inside zone and a stretch play. And here I'm showing it to you, uh, showing the jet off of the two because we did, we did pair our, our jet motion <clears throat> a lot of times with our inside zone run, um, just to add some extra movement, but I wanted just to kind of cover it here. Um, just kind of talk about a few of the coaching points, especially with our inside zone. There were some changes that we made too, as well. That I kind of wanted to show you that I'm actually going to draw out here on the screen. Um, but with our inside zone, again, we're trying to find double teams. We are trying to find what double teams we can we can find with each which with uh, each front and exploit those double teams and carry those double teams up to the second level. That's that's what we're trying to do. That's you know, that's what we focus on our practice when we run our inside zone is where are our double teams, whether it's a three-man front, four-man front, five-man front, doesn't matter. We have to find where the double teams are. And, if, and linemen have simple rules. Um, the number one rule that we've had our linemen follow is inside, head up, outside. So no matter what run play, even in pass protection, they have to think protect inside first, then head up, then outside. And that kind of ruling and that kind of mindset um, holds true with our inside zone play here. So here you can see we're running an inside zone to the left here. So the rules are, we'll, we'll go from play side here. We'll start with play side. Center is going to um, protect play side A gap. Okay, so again, he's thinking inside, uh, head up or outside. So he's thinking right now, do I have anybody inside? Technically, yes, I do. Okay, so he's going to take a power step or play step to and engage that defense attack on the situation. Okay, left guard in this situation is thinking, do I have anybody inside? No, I do not. Do I have anybody head up? Yes, I do. So I'm going to block. So now I'm going to combo block with the center, and we're going to carry that combo block up to the nearest linebacker, the nearest inside linebacker here. Now, this is where our changes were made. Now, our changes here were – that a lot of times that we would have this, our, our play side tackle, um, he would go ahead and try and drive block. But a lot of times when that defensive end was making his rush, getting to the outside, um, a lot of times our, our tackles would miss that block or not be able to really get a good solid block on him. And a lot of times that defensive end would end up making the play. So we decided to make a couple of changes. We actually decided to let our, pat, our, our our tackle for our play side, for our inside zone, actually pass protect in a way. So instead of going and trying to drive blocking and taking that step forward and then potentially stepping way out, up, you know, missing the block completely, basically he's going to set him here, let him make his rush, and just allow that defensive end to take that defensive end wherever he wants to go. So if he wants to continue going outside, tackle is just going to keep following him to the outside here like this. So just basically just stay in his way. Just stay in his way. And what happens is there's a nice little window or a nice little running lane that is created right here. Especially, too, if we combine that with our inside zone, or excuse me, our jet motion here. It gets these linebackers moving laterally. It creates a nice little motion or a nice little, excuse me, running lane right in where the uh, defensive end was. Uh, so our backside, again, same idea, same same thought process would be inside, head up, outside. So backside guard, do I have anybody inside? No, I do not. Do I have anybody head up? Yes, I do. So I'm blocking there. Now what we do do is we do leave that backside defensive end unblocked 
uh, and our quarterback is not reading. We do, we, I just, we just don't have enough time to sit there and teach the read play, but we do have, uh, we do have a coach who does watch when we call these running plays and does watch the backside end or the backside linebacker to see how they react and to see if we can take advantage of it. If we can't take advantage of them being aggressive in this defensive end, crashing down hard towards the running back, we will make a pull call. We, we have a simple little tag that we put on to our, that we attach to our, our inside zone signal that just lets the quarterback know, hey, we want you to pull it and just, and just keep it. And he takes off this way. Okay. And um, every single play, we are faking, whenever we call inside zone, we are faking uh, the quarterback run here. And again, we're trying to see how this defensive end reacts. A lot of times what we do see too as well is just that quarterback flashing in front of his face will freeze this defensive end and not cause him to uh, to crash hard down the line. But if he does, if he does, we take we take notice of that and um, and we and we call pull call. And then once we call that pull call once or twice, it definitely does have an effect on this backside defense, and it does keep him honest. So so here again, going back to the the, the blocking here. Backside tackle knows that he's just going to leave that defensive end. So he's going to combo with that defensive tackle there, and he's going to make his way up. To, and they're going to move that combo up to the linebacker. So in this scenario here, we have two double teams. Um, now, if it's a three-man line or three-man front, um, if they don't have anybody in front of them or if they don't have anybody inside or head up, then they release, take a play side step, to the nearest linebacker and they're going to the second level immediately going to get the linebacker. So that is our blocking scheme for our inside zone here. Um, receivers to be on the outside, we just send them on vertical just to clear out the space. Um, slot receivers, they are trying to get to their, uh, the uh, inside shoulder of their player that's either inside or head up of them and just try, trying to try, drive them block down the field. And they just, they know, um, with receivers that, you know, if we follow that, that whole saying that a lot of other coaches do, uh, no block, no rock. So we've got to make sure that we, we, we put an emphasis on our receivers block. Um, coaching point for the running back. Um, typically it's going to be, you're aiming right at the center's uh, place that hit. That's usually where we, where we aim it. Um, but again, running back has the option to, read the block. So we tell him to read these blocks and read for the hole. He's going to aim here, but we have the option because again, like I said, with this play side defensive end crack or going that going downfield and the tackle taking him uh, where he wants to go. A lot of times what we do is we do see that this natural lane right here, right where the defensive end was opens up. And then from there, the running back does have the option to kind of just bounce it out to the outside if he needs to. And you'll see that in some of the clips that, you know, uh, the running back just uses his athletic, uh, athleticism just to just to get to the outside and uh, get the positive, positive yards turned into a huge gain for us. The example of our stretch running play, this is just out of three by one. We ran it out of two by two, but we had more success run our stretch run play out of uh, out of our three by one. Now we could run towards the trips or away from the trips. Um, we've done it both ways. Um, we like the numbers of energy that it gives us with the uh, with with running towards the trips here. Um, blocking rules here again. It's it's, it's going to follow the same thing as inside head up outside. Um, but the rules here play side play side. You are trying to get. I mean each each lineman here. Is trying to get to the play side shoulder. So if it's to the so if it's to the right, then they are trying to get to that play that defenders, the nearest defenders, uh, left shoulder. If it's to the left, vice versa. So here, play side tackle is trying to get to that defense man. He's trying to get to this this shoulder and then just seal into the inside. Now, right guard, he has nobody uh, inside. But technically, he does have somebody inside, but. Um, it kind of shifts down a little bit here. He's going to still take a play side, a hard play side step because he knows the center is going to pick up this and it's just, they're just going to pass the defender down. Um, 
So he's going to take a hard play, side step, and he's going to work to the second level to try and get to that linebacker. Again, trying to seal uh, that defender in. Center will hard play, side step, and try and get to that defensive tackles. Uh, play side shoulder, same thing here for the guard here, the backside guard, and tackle just handles defense bench just to keep him uh, at bay and do a lot, don't allow him to make the play or chase the play down from the back. Um, now, if they can't get to the play side shoulder, which again, the play side players here, the tackle, the guard, even the center, it's going to be a hard block to try and reach to that shoulder. So they have two options. The first option is they're going to try and get to that shoulder. The second option is this. If they can't, then they're just going to drive block and they're going to drive that block all the way to the sideline. Same thing here. They're going to drive that block all the way to the sideline. Here, if they can't get to that shoulder, drive that block all the way to the sideline and just keep driving. Now, running back. Running back's rule is he's first going to try and aim for the outside shoulder once he comes across, once he comes across and he mesh, meshes with the other uh, quarterback. Um, he's aiming for the outside hip of our middle receiver, trying to get to the outside. But he has the option, too, is if there are openings here, he can cut it up inside as well. Or if not, he reads the block and he busts to the outside. And we originally want to, we, we normally want to try and get to this play to the outside, especially our receivers here are going to block, are going to down block here. So our inside receiver, our H receiver, he's going to chip the defensive end, and then he's going to work back to the inside linebacker that's inside our head up. Now that movement right there, a lot of times causes this linebacker to move in to try and follow the, uh, the receiver. And then it's real quick, he's just going to give a real quick chip to the defensive end and then work his way up. Um, Z is going to try and get to the uh, inside shoulder there. And Y is actually going to help down block. So we're actually going to create a double team right there, leaving the corner unblocked. Now, again, same thing as with the inside linebacker. Y is moving down the block, help out with the linebacker there. The corner typically will follow. So Z could potentially have a combo and then help. But if not, what that does, that creates a one-on-one -on -one, uh, opportunity for the running back and the corner. And the corner will be out of position. And one of our best athletes in the field in open space on the edge, um, we like our chances there against any corner. Um, again, quarterback has the fake here. Let's click here. We are running our, out of our two by two set, we are running a zone to the left here. Again, what we want to watch though is our, is our play side tackle here. He, he virtually is going to allow this defensive end to go wherever he wants to go and just stay in front of him. And again, you will see that it creates a natural little running lane. Um, to the outside here and then then from there the running back just uses his athleticism to get positive yardage and you'll see i'll go back to it here he takes you can see number 77 right here he He's basically just staying in front of his man. Instead of trying to reach block for him and trying to trying to drive him this way, he just allows him to come and come upfield naturally like he would be doing normally with his rush. It just allows him to come upfield, and then, it, and then the running back reads that, and he sees that space that is open right there, and he just hits the hole, and he's gone. This is on left again, not two by two, and this would be a better example of it. You'll be able to see it. So, again, our play side tackle right here. He's going to be blocking this defensive end here, too. Um, they came out of three man line. So, he also, there's a couple things that I want to point out here. You will see that our linemen here, our guard and our center, they are uncovered. 
so that they you, you will see that they work their way up to the second level to uh, to the linebacker as well. But the number one thing I want to focus on is the, the the coaching change that we made with this, where this defensive end, we're going to allow him to, you know, his aggressiveness, we're going to use it against him. So if he's just going to run up field like this hard and they're going to have no one replace it, we will we'll let that, we'll allow that to happen. And you will see that running back just reads that and he is just hitting the hole where that defensive end used to be. You see that he's just taking, taking the uh, defensive end completely out of the play. And running back, you can tell by his eyes, he's already seeing this opening right here. So he's going to go ahead and he's going to hit that hole right there. And then from there, he's just following the blocks of the wide receivers. You see guard here leaving to go and get a linebacker, which is what we would like to see. Same with the center. He goes and meets another. Uh, inside linebacker, middle linebacker right here. And with that right there, <clears throat> our play side tackle taking him out. There is the open running lane that we want to try and take advantage. So we this coaching change that we did, that we made and we saw this on film, it just it, it made more sense, especially at this level, for you know, him to just kind of just stay in front and just take that defensive end wherever he wants to go. So if he wants to go five yards down the field, just as long as you stay in front of him and you can maintain your block, then you've done your job. Um, we, we saw that just too many times if he was trying to reach that player that he would end up missing the block and that defensive end would, um, would make the play or, or, or heavily affect the play in the, in the backfield or close to the line of scrimmage. So this way we take advantage of his aggressiveness um, in, in, the uh, the same thing would happen if, say, for example, if this defensive end decides to go make his rush inside. Again, tackles number one rule is do not let anybody flash in front of your face. So he's watching that first. He's looking for that first, and he's going to guard against it. Now, if they come with a blitz here, and they and they try and come on a blitz on the inside, tackles rule still is he's going to protect the inside. So he's going to protect the inside. So he'll pick up that blitz and leave the defensive end, and then. The what should happen if that blitzer comes down, then there should be an opening where the where, where the uh, running back should be able to read uh, a, a lane that is created by where that blitzing linebacker used to be. But making this coaching change helped us immensely. Immensely, it did. Uh, having him just, just essentially just vertically drop and just staying in front of that defensive end and that natural running lane just opened up for us a lot. zone to our right here um you can you see how many people they are putting at the line of scrimmage here and i believe this defensive end which is right here he decides to make an inside inside move uh again trying to flash in front of the defensive end's face and running back reads that all right running back reads that and he bounces it to the outside which but they put this many people on the line of scrimmage there are going to be some hope or openings. If they don't make initial contact or if they don't disrupt the play in the backfield or at the line of scrimmage, then there is not much left to defend. As you can see, they're manned up here on the outside here and one safety back. So if they don't, they don't make, uh, make good on the, uh, the initial rush that they have here, then there's some trouble here and running back made him pay for it. He makes a good play to the outside, reads that, re reads that block by the play side tackle. And then it's just off to the race after that. So you can see defensive end decides to make uh, an inside move. That's fine. Tackle stays with him, stays in front of him. Still is kind of vertically dropping on, on, the, on the play here. And running back busts to the outside here. Slot receiver is setting up his block right here. And our outside receiver has got the corner lined up here. Only problem I had was our inside slot receiver here missed his block and potentially this could have hurt us here. But you see with this pull here, this player's eyes are almost actually towards the quarterback, so it kind of freezes him a little bit. And you see how he came by 
and he kind of just ran right here as opposed to running run back because quarterback, just that little fake right there kind of made him hesitate. But I'm going to go back here and let it play. And you can see again that that defensive end decided to make an inside play. And you can see our tackle already vertically dropping, not allowing him to uh, to get beat um, or not allowing him to get through. As long as that tackle moves his feet enough to stay in front of him. Again, running back's eyes downfield, reading this block right here, makes a good read. And then from the rest from right here, he just reads his receiver blocks right here. They do a good job staying front. And at that point, safety is already nowhere, nowhere to be found. Not going to be able to make that play. Again, against one of our best athletes on the field. And it's not really much of a chance. Example of our stretch play here. We ran this kind of towards the goal line here. Um, and basically, it's just the running back is going to try and get to the outside, but he's going to read the blocks and just look for the openings. And once he sees the opening, um, he's going to hit it. Now, in this particular play, he does just kind of just read it and just kind of ride along the line of scrimmage and then eventually just make a, make a burst into the end zone and scores. But he's very patient with it. Um, again, he has the option of cutting it back up inside or hitting it to the outside. Now, initially, we want to try and hit this to the outside. Um, but he does have the option of cutting it back to the inside as well. We do make the score on it. So again, you can see he's trying to read his block, read his block. Now, one thing I want to point out here, our inside receiver should be giving a little chip right here on the defensive end and then making his way to safety. You can see that he kind of initially just goes right to the safety. Actually, I'm not sure where he, I think he's going to the other, the other side where is he could have went to the, uh, the man that was straight up with him. But if he makes that chip right here on that defensive end, then that springs the running back a little bit easier and then that running back can potentially right here score, but he has to outrun that defensive end. That defensive end kind of just rides along and kind of tries his best to set the edge, which he does a good job for a little bit, but then, speed of the running back just takes over here and he just is able to hit the corner. But one po coach point here, if he could just get a little chip right here, just kind of just nudge him, not in the back, but just nudge him right here in the shoulder. That slows him down a little bit and it allows the running back to clear and either hit it up right here or continue at the outside. For example of our stretch play, we're running this out of three by one here. Again, we're going to stretch left here, trying to get to the outside, trying to get past uh, the uh, the outside shoulder, the outside hip, excuse me, of uh, of our middle receiver, which is our Z. Uh, one thing I saw on this, you will see too, is tackle needs to have a better block, needs to stay with the play a little bit longer because if he does, it stays in the way of that defensive end, then it causes the uh, allow excuse me, allows the running back to make his move uh, a little bit earlier and get upfield. The, in this play, in this clip, you will see how the running back has to use his speed to get all the way outside before he can really turn a turn corner and get upfield. You will see that he doesn't make a good job here. He doesn't. He, he doesn't even basically get a hand on him. He he gets in the way a little bit, but he um, he gets his hands on him. He slows these this rush down, and the running back is able to make his move a little bit sooner than he does to get more potentially more yards than what he did get. I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope it helped. Um, Please, if you like if you like this content, uh, make sure you subscribe. Also, add a like; it really helps the channel grow. Um, if you have anything or do anything different, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, leave it down in the comments. Let me know. I'd love to hear from other coaches. Get uh, new new insight and also um, answer any questions that you may have. Um, hope you enjoy this video again. Like I said, and uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. See you.